This curry is a family secret passed down from one generation to the next, and it's not very known on YouTube. It also has a place in my top favorite comfort curries I love to make on a weekly basis. If you're looking for a delicious, easy, comfy curry, my aunt Suriname's eggplant curry named Boulanger is not gonna disappoint. It contains chicken, but you can easily adapt it to a vegetarian version by leaving it out. It has an amazing savory juicy taste and is easier than most curries because it has less spices than your average Indian curry and therefore great for beginning home cooks. My aunt used to make this when I was little and it was one of the first curries I've ever tried. This curry made me fall in love with curries so it has a special place in my heart and I'm sure it will win over yours as well. So get your apron and let's go. Boulanger is a Surinamese eggplant curry, but this version makes it our family secret since it has changed over time due to the ingredients my aunt and predecessors added to it. First, cut up your ingredients and prepare everything before you start cooking the curry. Start by cutting up two eggplants into bite-sized pieces. Do the same to one zucchini. Peel and cut four potatoes into bite-sized cubes and set that all aside. Then grab two yellow onions and cut the onions into one centimeter cubes as well. Crush or mince four garlic cloves and cut up three chicken thighs also into bite-sized pieces. If you want to make it vegetarian, you can just skip the chicken. Now let's get the spices ready. Make sure you have lots of curry powder, ground cumin, ginger powder, and some MSG. Then also grab one cube of chicken or vegetable stock powder, dark soy sauce, also known as ketchup manis, and get one lemon and slice it in half. We will also have one secret ingredient and one additional ingredient that I added myself for extra richness later in this video. Now you have all these ingredients ready, it's time to make this deliciousness for your mouth. Put a large pan on medium high heat with a thick bottom, like my cast iron pan. Add some butter, then add in the chicken and let it sit for four minutes so it gets this nicely golden brown layer. Season your chicken with some salt and pepper, then remove the chicken and let it rest. This way you can also make a part of your curry vegetarian and the other part with chicken, like I did since my girlfriend is vegetarian. Then add another nub of butter, put in your onions and let it get translucent. Once it got translucent, add the garlic and then 70 milliliters of ketchup manis or 6 tablespoons. Then it's time to add the first layer of spices. Add 3 tablespoons of curry powder and 1 tablespoon of cumin powder. Then additionally add 1 tablespoon of ginger powder. We will add some more curry and cumin powder later, but when the other ingredients are added. Doing it this way gives a more balanced flavor in the end result. Add some optional magical stardust grains or MSG. Stir and then reduce the heat to medium. Then add your cubes of zucchini and eggplants and stir again. Put on the lid and let that sit for 10 minutes so the eggplant can release its juices for the curry base. After 10 minutes, add one more time 3 tablespoons of curry powder and 1 tablespoon of cumin powder. Then add 1 cube of chicken or vegetable stock. Then make sure that all the ingredients are submerged by adding 250 milliliters of water. Give it a good stir and add your potatoes to the curry. We add the potatoes a bit later because if you add them in the beginning they will literally become mash. And you want some bite left in the potato when you eat your curry. Add the juice of half a lemon and then add your chicken. Because this was our dinner I had to put the chicken in later so I can split the curry in half to make a vegetarian option as well. But go ahead and add the chicken now. Let the simmer on medium low heat for 45 minutes with the lid on. Make sure to scrape the bottom every 10 to 15 minutes or so. But because of the low heat and the thick bottom of your pan, it shouldn't burn that quickly. You do have a thick bottom pan, right? If you don't and your food is already burned, no worries, it can happen to the best of us. Just subscribe to my channel and check out any other recipes or tips how not to burn your food. But if you feel confident in your skills, give this video a like since you're definitely going to make this, right? <laughs> When the curry is almost ready, start preparing your side dish. I love to eat this with a flatbread such as a parada, roti or naan. But you can also serve this with rice or just eat it without a side dish since it has potato in it. 
Now that the curry is almost ready simmering, it's time to season the curry. Make sure that you add 10 cracks of salt and 10 cracks of black pepper and taste the curry. Add some more salt or black pepper to your taste, but also check the acidity levels. Add some more lemon juice if you feel it can be a little bit more sour. Stir it all together. Add some more water if it's too thick and let it simmer for five more minutes without the lid on. You should be left with a nice, creamy, thicky eggplant curry. Then grab a bowl, serve your curry and add two more components. The first one is a mango chutney. And I mean this specific brand, if you can get it. It is really spicy, but has a sweetness of mango coming through. If you cannot find this brand, that's fine. Just make sure that you pick a spicy mango chutney. And finally, this is one of my own additions. My aunt doesn't do this, but I think it makes the curry a bit more creamier. Drizzle over some heavy cream for serving. It looks nice and it also gives this richer mouthfeel. Serve with your side dish and enjoy. Okay, so that's the boulanger from my aunt. Give it a taste. And always have your mango chutney on hand. It's so rich, it's so savory. It's actually everything I want in a curry. And that comes straight from my childhood. So give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that is a secret revealed. The lovely boulanger curry, a family secret. I'm really, really curious what you think of this curry. And if you look for another lovely curry, check out my tikka masala recipe. What has a definitely a spot in my top favorite curries as well. And then I see you in the next video.